Salvate omnes. Welcome back to the Aeneid Book 1. Post quam intro graci et coram data copia fandi, Maximus Ilioneas placido sic pectore coepit. O Regina, no one cui condere Jupiter orbem, justitiaque dedit gentes frenare superbas, Troios te miseri ventis mari omnia vecti, oramus. Proeben fandus a navibus ignes, parque pio generiet ho proprius res aspice nostras. After they entered, and an opportunity of speaking face to face was given, very great Ilioneus thus began with a calm heart. O Queen, to whom Jupiter has given the right to establish a new city and to check the proud nations with justice, we beg you, as miserable Trojans, having been carried over all the seas by the winds, keep off the dreadful fires from our ships. Spare the God-fearing race and look at our affairs more closely. So Ilioneus is one of the Trojan leaders traveling with Aeneas, so he goes up to Queen Dido and he speaks out to plead with her various things and mostly for protection. So here he begins by flattering her. He says, O oh, queen, to whom Jupiter, Jupiter being of course the king of the gods, gave and implied the right to establish a new city and to check the proud kinds with justice. So he's saying, wow, Jupiter's given you this great power. You are a great queen. He's saying pretty much that. And then he goes on to say, we're miserable Trojans. So he's showing a contrast here, kind of like they're at her mercy and they're miserable Trojans. And notice the Te is put right in here, kind of like he's saying, we're miserable Trojans in your eyes. But then down here he has, look at our things more closely. And he calls the Trojans a pious race, a God-fearing race. So he's kind of saying not everything is as it might seem. And here he says, look at our, or, oh, he says, keep off the unspeakable fires, the dreadful fires from our ships. This is because at first the Carthaginians have received the Trojans as if they were pirates, and they've been threatening to burn the Trojan ships. So now Ilioneus has gone to Queen Dido to beg for their ships to be spared and to plead with her and say that they come in goodwill and please look at them as a pious race. Skinus, look at them as that. Do not look at them as pirates or anything that they're not. Look more closely. Notice here, parque, spare the pious race. Parque takes a dative direct object, as you can see right here with Pio Genere, dative. And up here, let's see, we have Wentis having been cast over all the seas by the winds. Ablative. Let's see what else we have here. Ah, uh, yes. Gerund or gerundive. Fondi. So think about that. Try and figure out if it's a gerund or gerundive. Maybe you have an answer in your head. You can pause the video if you want to think about it before I reveal it. Because here I go. This is a gerund. Fondi is a gerund. Remember, gerund is a verbal noun where gerundiv is a verbal adjective. Gerundiv, adjective, kind of rhyme. That's how you can remember it. So fondi isn't modifying anything. It's not agreeing with something, so it can't be an adjective, but it can be a noun because it translates as an opportunity of speaking was given face-to-face. -face. You can ignore that face-to-face, -face, but an opportunity of speaking was given. So it's not modifying anything, it's all by itself. 
It's in the genitive singular neuter, which we know is a common form, one of the only few forms that a gerund can take. Clearly, fondy is a gerund and not a gerundive.